Okay, shall we just kick it off? Sounds good. Well then, hello everybody. Um, welcome to this new contributor meeting. I think today will be mostly Q&A if you have any questions. We don't have anything big prepared or something. Um, so we're just here to basically answer questions if you have any or help you with problems that you have or something like that. And there's also no meeting notes. <laughs> so they've uh -huh. um, but I guess we can reuse the normal community meeting meeting notes for now at least, and then I will figure something out. I feel like we have a document somewhere, I just don't have it. I'm not sure, maybe Mac knows more. Yeah, no, that's what I was trying to. Yeah, I have a vague that we had one from what, that where you put Andre's presentation in, but. So then, let's just use the community meeting one for now. Okay. And do something like what do we have today. Um, hi. I saw a meeting notes regarding this new contributor meeting. So I sent the link. Can you just check it out? Oh, good. Have you got the link? Thanks. Yeah, just check it out if that one is the correct I'll check. One. Hey, perfect. Thank you so much. You know our stuff better than we do, apparently. <laughs> awesome. So then let's go ahead and... Copy this whole block. And today we have the December. You can add your names. <clears throat> Let's double check Should the, the link in chat for this document too. Okay. Yeah, that's the link that's a deep deposit. I can repost just in case. Yeah. Oh, it, it, I'm not seeing what Sadip does. Oh, there it is. Never mind. I see Sadip does. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. So today's agenda is pretty short. <laughs> um, you can ask whatever you want. We can try to help you. Um, that's that. Does anybody have any questions or want to share something or? So do I have a link for us? Let's see. Oh yeah, that one. And put this actually in progress. <clears throat> yeah, so I was looking into this issue, but I'm pretty new into this. So like, if you can go over this issue and like describe it in more detail so that like it's easy. Yeah. Um, so this one is the one you're contrib uh, collaborating with as well. Okay. Yeah, I assigned you both for now. Um, yeah. I hope you will figure it out. Um, so let me see quickly. So yeah, this is actually still in progress. Um, so we have those three tickets now uh, for cert managers since we noticed that we have some um, problems there. So this is one of them. This is the first one you're already working on with Joffrey, uh, as far as I remember, um, to kind of enable and disable the cert manager and then also um, enable slash disable um, the correct check for the secret and stuff like that. Um, so that we can fully like disable and enable cert man our own cert manager so that people can use cert manager.io if they want to. Um, and this ticket basically gives users more flexibility in how they can set up certmanager.io with, um, with Captain. So until now, 
we had, I'll show it off here. Actually, there should probably be the link in here. Is there the link to the code? No, okay, then I'll show it off here. Um, how do I find this best? Lifecycle operator chart templates. Oh, it's not actually the deployment. It's in the red books. Yeah, so here you'll see it. See it. Um, so for our uh, certificate injection, we have our own cap.sh slash inject cert label that we use. Um, but certmanager.io has this one here um, and actually a few others. But the issue here is that we hard coded this one into the Helm chart, this inject CA from. Um, and cert manager actually needs a few different labels um, if you want to do different scenarios of injection, basically. So this page here that's linked from certmanager.io actually describes this. And you can see here, um, there's actually this inject CA from label that we have now, or annotation actually. I think we use, yeah, we use annotations. Um, it has this inject CA from annotation, but then it also has inject CA from secret and inject API server CA. And the issue is that we hard coded this annotation and you cannot as a user um, override this or configure it differently. So that should be solved here. So the user should be able to configure um, any of those labels um, in the right spots in our chart. And we actually have multiple spots where this comes up. So it's in, in all of the web configurations, um, mutating, validating, and I forgot the third one, conversion. Um, yeah, so to basically give users more flexibility in how they use certmanager.io with Captain, um, we need to like to be able to customize those labels or annotations in this case, um, but they're kind of interchangeable. Um, so yeah, the exactly. So remove the hard coded thing, um, and then instead use a new Helm value called global.ca injection annotations. Um, and it's important that this is under the global um, keyword because um, then it will be available in the umbrella chart and all of our three sub, uh, in that case, two sub charts because the search manager is going to be disabled, but in all of our sub charts. Um, and then the user can go ahead and have this one Helm value that they set with the right label and then that will be propagated to all the locations in the Helm chart where it's needed so that the secrets are injected from cert manager .o. Um, and then there's some auxiliary stuff, documentation, of course, a manual test, and you will need to adapt the Helm tests that we have. And that's something I can actually link here so that it's easier to find. I think it's inside the, yeah. Yeah, this one here. Let's add this link here. Yeah, I had this question as well, like, where is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this basically just does Helm template, and we have an already templated result file in there. And and that should be, um, that will be tested with the pipeline every time you push. Um, so that as soon as you change something in the Helm chart, the pipeline will fail, and you will need to double check manually, basically, what to add. Um, and how it changes the Helm chart compared to what you do in the various files and stuff. Um, but keep in mind that we have this prerequisite here. So so we need this secret check first. And, uh, and then... You, uh, explain a little bit what's the dependency on that prerequisite. I mean, I cannot go with that this too. So the dependency exists because for cert manager.io to properly kick in, you need to be able to fully disable our cert manager. And that's done in this ticket. So the secret check um, needs to be removed, which is currently not the case if you disable our cert manager. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. you can probably still just 
get started and and see where you end up. Maybe the defense is not as hard and it will still work out of the box. Just, I don't know. I'm not fully sure if it's a hard dependency or not. Um, so I would say try it out and see where you get stuck. And then maybe you need to wait a few days until you can continue with this. Okay. If that's fine for you. Yeah, but that's great. Uh, cool. Uh, so I have another like in another question that's like if you go to the metrics operator and then CRT and patches, so there is a file there also this site manager annotation, but it's mm -hmm. coming from some kind of uh, just go to the patches uh, and CRD. CRD patches. Yes, then, the CA injection here. Yeah. Uh, the third so, one. Yeah. so it's coming. Which one? From, the third one? Yeah. It's coming from some like environment variable. So is it like configurable something or it's not hard coded, right? It, um, I gotta double check, but I think it is still hard coded. So you'll have. So <laughs> most importantly, those files are not even used. So you'll see here the whole patches list. Oh. It's all common to that. I see it. Yes. So the whole thing is not used at all. This is part of the auto generation when you use cube builder. Um, so we use cube builder to basically, that's basically our tool that generates all, all the configuration around um, our CRDs and the APIs. Yeah, yeah, and it will make yeah. sure that all the webhooks are updated and all that stuff. But we don't use all of it because Cube Builder will actually per default use cert manager.io, but we don't in Captain. Okay. Yeah. Because we have our own cert manager. So you you don't actually need to, need to care about that at all. Um, none of those files here are actually used. Okay. Because it's all disabled here. Thank you. It uh, clears some of my confusion. So yeah. if you want to like, go over the files that I exactly need to like, look at one more time. So. What is ticket? Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I don't even know like right off the top of my head, but what I would do is go ahead and start adding this value here. And that's going to be in all of the charts. So you'll need to adapt the matrix operator chart here. Uh, not this is the umbrella chart, uh, which we have in the... You need to adapt it in all of the charts, also the umbrella chart, because every chart has this global um, section. But we have one chart in the root folder. So if yes. I go there, then it's available in all the charts, right? Um, yeah. Yes, that's true. But we want to have compatibility if you want to just use one of the subcharts standalone. Okay, so it's uh, better to put it into the subcharts. You need it in both, actually. You need it in all of the subcharts and you need it in the umbrella chart because we still want to ensure that um, a user could go ahead and just take the matrix operator chart without the umbrella chart and install that and still be able to configure everything. So when the user will configure this, they will have to configure in both the places, like put the head. No, they won't because um, there's some, some form of inheritance there. So yeah, I'll show you. Merged and Sorry? The, like all the charts will be merged into a single chart when they deploy it. No, uh, when, when you deploy it, it will become one set of manifests, yes, but it's still multiple charts. So you'll see the, the umbrella chart here. Yeah. Um, that actually has dependencies on the other charts. Yes. Um, so if you install the umbrella chart, you will get those three out of the box. 
but you could also go ahead and just install the metrics operator chart standalone and it will still work. Yes. You need to like wire it up from the outside differently and probably in a custom way because you don't have lifecycle operator in place and stuff like that, but you could also use it stand standalone. That's why we need to have the global values also in the sub charts because we need it here as well. If you just want to install metrics operator and want to use it with Circ Manager, then you need the same the same um, value that's going to be introduced here. I see. Yeah. So my plan would be to start off with um, with that basically add add the value to all of the charts. Every chart has this global section, and it's going to be. Um, it's going to be, how was it called? CA injection annotations. It's going to be that, and that's going to be a list. Because in the end, it will look something like, uh, if the user actually configures it, it would be third manager .io slash inject CA from, and then some secret name. That would be how it would be configured. And for that to be possible, this is a list. And you could actually have multiple here. Um, that would be an empty list at the start. Um, yeah, add this here. And then I would check some other thing where cancel changes, actually. I would go ahead and check if I find um, in this path here, if I find something where global is actually used, this one here, because um, you will need to use it the same way. Uh, where was it? Yeah, this one here. This is how we do this inheritance from okay. um, from umbrella chart to subcharts, basically. Although wait, this is actually, this has its own value and then the global ones. Maybe it's not needed at all, actually. Looking at this, I think you can just go ahead and can I edit this? No. Um, I think you could just go ahead and and use values.global. Um, the name of the thing, I forgot. Instead of having this um, this function here. The stuff. Yeah. But I, I guess you'll figure this out. It like I was trying to fetch a value from the umbrella chart here in some yeah. uh, sub chart. So I was able to get that like values that global. Yeah. That should work, yeah. It should be fine. You you will probably not need this. Okay. Um yeah. And then, exactly. And then you just need to figure out with a global search yeah. um, where, like, what are all the places where this inject CA from is hard coded. And then you'll find a whole list, like 30 files right now. I don't think it's actually that many. Not fully sure. And then you'll need to replace all of those occur occurrences in the charts so that they use the new values. So that it's not hard coded anymore. Yeah. And now I think... to the testing. How do you test? So the Helm tests are nothing more than just Helm template um, with predefined values files. Um if you want to talk about if you're talking about the automated tests, do you mean the manual test? Yeah. Like uh, I have to test that if my changes are okay or not so how do i ensure that for this thing? um you would actually need um a cluster and test it out on there so we always recommend kind for that yeah i have the cluster i mean i have yeah. to the um, like um, charts and see if uh, the certificate exactly yeah although you don't necessarily need to deploy it um, because in the end, you can also just check the Helm template output. Oh, I, I, the Helm uh, template command. Sorry? 
Uh, we have this helm, helm template command. So using using that, we can generate. Yeah. You can use Helm template to just generate the YAML from the chart. And yeah. And then see if the um the annotations look correct in all places, basically. And you can kind of do it before and after. So you can do a Helm template on main branch, for example, save that into a file, and then do a Helm template on your branch, save that into a file, and then do a, do a git of the, uh, do a diff of the two files, and then you'll see immediately what the differences are. Yeah. That should be so, the most straightforward. Yeah, so thank you for going over this. No worries. Um, and then just to mention it, the Helm test here, um, there's basically different folders for different scenarios. Um, and every folder contains a values file, which will be used. And then the resulting YAML that um, Helm template spits out basically. And you will need to kind of um, play with the values. So you will need to add your new values to some of, uh, at least one of those or create a new folder with new values and then also save the results, um, the resulting template file. Okay. Yeah. But I would actually recommend to, why does lifecycle with search? Okay. I'm not sure if anything really fits. Maybe, yeah. No, I think it's better to create a new, uh, to create a new folder here because none of those scenarios really fit with that. I think we don't have a, a nice test for that yet. So you will need metrics operator is enabled, lifecycle operator is enabled, certificate operator is disabled, and then you add your new global value. Okay. And then you should be good. I think that should be it then. Yeah. Thank you. On documentation, there's one documentation page um, where we talk about cert manager IO. Um, either you update it in your PR or not, and then we do a follow up PR and update the docs however you like, really. Cool. I hope um, this helped you. Um, should we mention the doc tools changing that's going on and what they need to deal with in the next couple of weeks, like um, writing a docs new? I think we talked about it twice now in the community meeting. Mm. Um, I would say stuff changed. Please look at the recording. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I hope it's... I hope it's actually live already. If it's not, then I will definitely repeat it. Yeah. Um, I I my recollection was that what we said was we just gave a heads up that we're in the process of changing this and it's not all oh, yeah. documented. And if you need to make a doc change in the next few weeks before we roll it out to ping us on Slack and get us to help you out or something. But yeah, definitely. That's always possible. And I think I specifically added to that ticket. Actually, I didn't, but I will add it now that you need to change the docs new folder and not, not the docs folder. Okay, any other questions? Or any remarks or anything you want to present or do we have, do you does everybody else know like Utkarsh and my guy think of actual names? These are new names to me and I get knocked off just as I ask who they were. Um what they're working on or hello. I think Utkarsh actually has a ticket assigned. But don't ask me which one. Good 
Kirsch, if you're talking, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Yes. I saw that you unmuted for a second. Yeah. You can also type in the chat if yeah. you have mic problems. So the last, wait, I think the last community meeting or the latest community meeting that's online is from November 15th. That's quite a while ago already. Mm. One, two, three, that's at least three weeks old. Oh, yes, and docs contributions. Cool. I definitely saw your name already. I just totally forgot what you worked on. I think it's even merged already, but I'm not fully sure. Just started with Captain New and started with non code oh, yeah, cool. contribution. Okay. That's merged already. Nice. Yeah, so um, if you want to work on any new tickets, um, I'll share my screen here again. If you want to work on any new tickets, we always have the good first issue label that you can use to filter out some. Um, if you are actually assigned already, um, but you can also do like assigned to nobody here. And then you'll see we have a few that are still not assigned to anybody that you can use. Um, if you want to do some easy code contributions, this would be a cool one, I think. That's fairly straightforward now um, that we reduced the scope. Um, and then what else? We have PRs for those, but they never got finished. So this is more on the documentation and code side. So it's, it's a combined thing. There's actually um, an older PR that's outdated by now, but you can probably use that as um, inspiration, if not even like continue to work on that, basically. Um, that's an easy one, but it still has it's still blocked right now, I think. Yeah, so two of the dependencies are still open here. So that's not actually fully able to be worked on. And this one also has an outdated PR. As far as I remember from Yash. Yeah, so there's some changes that need to be done. So this is actually kind of in progress already. Um, and yeah. do the rest of you know Mega? Nope. Nope. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Would you like to introduce yourself? Meg is still muted. Um... Ah, here she is. Here we are. See you in chat. Understood. <laughs>
Okay. Do we have the link to Andre's presentation? A couple of meetings. Um, where are we? Minutes of how to set up the. Let me check if we can find it. I think it was linked in the doc already. Ah, um, on maybe 9th October. Uh, it's in the documentation for getting started guide. We have okay. that. In the country and contributors. Okay. Yeah, if you can send send a link so that that would be cool. Yeah, Andre, one of our other maintainers, Mega, did took about a half an hour, I think, and stepped through what it takes to set up the development environment. And that was probably a good help. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one to get started, to set everything up. Um, cool. Perfect. And you can look, there's a few more hints in uh, the contributing guide. And have you joined, has everybody joined Slack? That's important. Yeah, we could maybe I'll show that off. Yeah, that's always good to know. So um I think we'll just advertise the CNCF Slack now, right? Exactly. Right. So if you search for CNCF Slack invite, you can actually um invite yourself on the first link here, like um the community inviter. You can actually invite yourself to the CNCF Slack uh, with your email here. Then you'll get an email invite, and then you can register for the um, for the Slack workspace. And is it just um, I? No, it's actually Cloud Dash Native for Slack.com. That's the one. Yeah. So in here you'll find that we have a few channels actually but this is the main one we have the main captain channel here um this is where you can reach all the all the maintainers um and most other interested people so i think this is the best spot to ask questions also if you ask questions here other people can read it and also um first of all contribute to your question and also um, gain knowledge from it. So, so not the same questions need to be answered again, again and again, basically. So this is better than private messages in my opinion, um, cause it helps out everybody and not just you. So I would recommend that you use this channel here. Um, and again, the CNCF Slack invite, I guess we can put that into the docs as well. Oh, not in the docs, but in the in this stock here. So this is where you can reach us always, basically. And then Mega, you found the repo, right? I'll just send the link in.
Okay. Um, is there any other questions? Uh, do we have time? Then uh, I, I think I have another issue I can discuss. Yeah, we have some more time. Uh, I, I send the link. Uh, basically, Joffrey is working on this issue, but I did some experiment myself. So the thing is that we have this cert manager dot enabled in the umbrella helm chart values. So how can we like access this value from inside the subcharts? If you if you look at the PR from Joffrey, you can see that he is accessing it like dot values dot cert manager dot enabled. Uh, I also tried that uh, and I also have a draft beer if you want to look at it. Yeah, like that, right? Yeah. Um, I actually discussed this with Andre today as well, and I think you talked already with Andre about this. Yeah. Um, and this is probably not how it will work. Um, yeah, because... Because we... the subcharts are like fully encapsulated. They don't know about the other one, basically, as yeah. long as you don't have anything in the global values. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. so... So I think the plan should be to use a global value, but uh, I also think Andre is still doing some investigation himself, and so I think he will get back to you on this. As far as I remember, I'm not sure what the last status was from him, but he he tried some stuff out with this as well. Um, but I think in the end, um, the solution should be to have, or not should be, but will probably be. Um, another global value. I see. Because the global values can be accessed by everything and the other ones not. Yeah. So so this value here will be probably moved into the global section. And that's going to be a breaking change for the chart. Um, but so be it. It should be fine. Yeah. So yeah, now I understand. Yeah. It's a tough issue. Helm charts and sub charts are like they work in mysterious ways sometimes. Like I need to look up documentation all the time on this. Yeah, thank you for going over. No worries. Yeah, and I think oh yeah, okay, one of the PRs is already closed. Cool. Yeah. So it's better to work on one PR than to a parallel, of course, but you figured it out already. Cool. Any other questions? Otherwise, I think we can conclude the meeting here. Have a nice holiday, everyone. Enjoy the last piece of the remaining year. And see you yeah, next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye, everyone. Yeah.